Welcome to Two Minute Photoshop Extra, the new home for tutorials that are too long to fit into two minutes. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at automating the process of creating bleed and crop marks in Photoshop. Let's look ahead to what we're going to end up with. Here's an image of a French chateau that I've cropped down to postcard size, and I'm setting it at 300 dpi, and that's very important, not just for this, but really for any print project. I'll apply that crop, and to add my crop marks and my bleed area, all I have to do is to type a keystroke, and there it is automatically done for us. You can see that there are separate layers for the guides. You can see the green inner guide that shows the crop area. There's a mask around the edges, and there are the crop marks on a separate layer as well. So that's what we're going to end up with. Let's now see how we begin that process. We'll make a new document. And we'll make this very small. We'll set it to just 600 by 400 pixels. But that that all important 300 pixels per inch is absolutely essential to make this work consistently. We'll create our document. And now open the Actions panel. If you don't have it immediately on view, go to choose Window and Actions, and it'll open for you. Down at the bottom, we'll press the little plus icon to make a new action. Let's call it Crop Marks. And let's set a shortcut for it. We can use any function key that hasn't been used. Let's go for F15 and press Record. We can now put the Actions panel away, and everything you do now will be recorded, not in real time, but step by step. So we'll start off by making a new layer, and let's call this one Guides. We'll start by doing Select All, We'll set a bright green as our foreground colour and go to Edit Stroke. We'll set a one pixel stroke inside our selected area and click OK. If we now deselect, you can just make out that green stroke inside here. To set the bleed area, we need to expand the canvas. So we'll go to Image and canvas size. We want to set a relative size here, and we want to increase it by a standard bleed amount of 3 millimeters. So we'll change to millimeters, and because we want 3 millimeters on both sides, we want a total expanded size of 6 millimeters on the width and 6 millimeters on the height. If you're in the US and working in inches, then you'll want to set probably an eighth of an inch for bleed, so you'll set a quarter of an inch in total, an eighth of an inch on both sides. Click OK, and the canvas is expanded. Let's set another guide outside here. We'll change the color to red, select all again. We'll go to stroke once more, and add a one pixel stroke inside this area. Now I'm not going to deselect yet because I want to set a temporary layer that covers this size. So we'll make a new layer and I'm going to call it Mask Temp. I want to fill the whole of this area with our foreground colour and we can use Option and Backspace or Alt and Backspace to do this. Now we can deselect. We now need to make the canvas bigger again, so we've got space for our crop marks. So we'll bring up our canvas size dialog once more. And I want extra space in here. I want 5 millimeters on both sides. Again, if you're working in inches, you'll probably want a quarter of an inch on both sides. So I'll change this to millimeters. 5 millimeters on both sides means 10 millimeters in total on the width and 10 millimeters on the height. And we'll click OK and there is our new expanded canvas. 
and I want to fill the area outside here with white so it masks the image outside the bleed area. To do that, hold Command or Control and click on the thumbnail for this Mask Temp layer and it loads up that area as a selection. We can now delete this layer and we've still got our selection area active. We'll make another new layer and we'll call this one Mask. We want to fill the area outside the selection so go to Select and Inverse and that selects everything except the original selection. We want to fill with the background colour and we do that with Command and Backspace on a Mac, Control and Backspace on a PC. You're not going to see any difference because we're filling with white. You can just see on the thumbnail we've got that border in there. Let's deselect. Now for the crop marks themselves. Let's make another new layer and we'll call this one Crop Marks. We'll zoom in to the corner, switch to the Marquee tool and position the cursor in the top corner. Hold the Shift key as you drag it to make a perfect square and drag it down until it meets your crop area. We'll set the foreground colour to black and now let's add our stroke. This time we want a two pixel stroke because one pixel is going to be too small to see when it's printed at 300 dots per inch and we want it centred on our selection area. And let's view this at 100%. Now we don't want our crop marks to extend all the way into the crop area because we don't want to see them over the bleed area. So with the marquee tool still active, hold the shift key down and use the cursor keys to nudge the selection 10 pixels at a time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. With the right cursor key nudges it 50 pixels over to the right. Shift key again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with a down cursor key, nudges it 50 pixels down. And now we can delete the crop marks in that area and deselect. To get the crop marks all the way round, we'll duplicate the layer, select all, and now flip it horizontally and deselect. We've got them in those two corners. We'll merge these two layers together using Command E or Control E. Once again, duplicate the crop marks layer, select all, flip vertically, deselect and merge it down again. We've got the crop marks where we want them coming out into our image. We've also got these rather ugly borders on here and that's because of the way we applied the stroke. To get rid of that, let's make the canvas size a little bit smaller. Image, canvas size and now let's make it smaller by just four pixels. So we can type minus four in both fields. We'll click OK. It's going to say the new canvas size is smaller than the current canvas size. Yes, we know that. Go ahead and do it. And there is our action complete. If we open the Actions panel again, we can press Stop down at the bottom. And we can see that every step of our action has been recorded for us from making the initial layer, making the selection, changing the foreground colour, setting the stroke, duplicating the crop marks and so on. And it takes us right down to changing our canvas size at the end. Let's try it to make sure it works. We'll make a new document. Let's make this one A4 in size. Again, 300 
dots per inch, that's absolutely essential, and click Create. To run the action, we simply press the keystroke we saved earlier, in this case it was F15, and there's the action created almost instantly for us. If we zoom in, there we can see our guides layer. If we hide the background, there's the mask layer outside there, and there's our crop marks on their own layer. Because of the way we created this action, it'll apply to a document of any size and any shape. It'll always put the crop marks, the bleed area, and the mask exactly where you want them, outside the canvas area. And because they're all created on separate layers, it's very easy just to hide that guides layer before you go to print. Every time you want to create crop marks in Photoshop from now on, all you have to do is to type the keystroke you recorded and the crop marks will be created for you in an instant.